Hello and welcome to Elida Fieldhouse for today's the district final between the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. I'm Nate Garlock Hello, alongside Garland. Josiah Stover. And Josiah, you know, tournament season is well underway now. These teams, a couple of big wins um, in their pockets, but you get that big game feel. You got the crowds in here tonight, a wonderful facility. And, you know, last year, revenge on the mind for the Wildcats who are under, have a tremendous season, 23-1, and one, undefeated in conference play. They are rolling, but they come up against a juggernaut in the Ottawa Glendale Titans tonight. Absolutely, the Wildcats are not backing down from the challenge. They know what's in front of them, but if they want to get those bigger goals and what they have in front of them, they've got to play the best, and playing the best includes this Ottawa Glendorf Titan team. We will take a look at tonight's starter, starting first for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. They are going to start number three, Carson Erford. Number 12, Lily Hazelman. Number 32, Caitlin Kimmett. Number 34, Katie Kaufman. And number 45, Chloe Glenn. And for the Delphus Jefferson Lady Wildcats, they are going to start number five, Hannah Wiltsey. Number 10, Gwen Tiemann. Number 15, Olivia Lindemann. Number 30, Jessa Rostifer. And number 42, Lauren French. So we are just about underway as Lauren French will meet in the middle as Katie Kaufman will oppose her. Tip is up, and it will be controlled first by the Titans. Yeah, I expect Delphus to come out in that tough man-to-man -man defense. Trapping here, as we see, as the ball goes into the post and then closing out on those shooters. And I think that help defense on the inside that you mentioned is going to be key as Jefferson is going to have their hands full. Lauren French had a great game against Allen East as we have our first whistle of the game. Looks like that one is going to go on number 30, Jessa Rostifer. But Lauren French had a great game against Allen East. Four blocks, 10 rebounds, 16 points. Led that Wildcat offense. But this is a whole other dynamic when you play out with Glendor, as they have three different bigs that they can throw at you underneath. And this Jefferson Wildcat team is undersized as they try to match up one-on-one -on -one against Ottawa Glendor. First free throw was good. Second one is no good. Liv Lindemann comes in. She gets the rebound. Delphus Jefferson, their first try on offense. Lindemann lets a three-pointer go. Good closeout by Hazelman as Lindemann leaves that one short. And really, that's the battle we want to see tonight between Lily Hazelman and Liv Lindemann. You know, Liv comes in the player of the year in the Northwest Conference, averaging 19.9 points. And we know all know about Lily Hazelman and her defense. Wildcat turnover, and Lindemann's going to bring it up the floor. Lindemann scored her 1,000th point earlier this season. And she has led this offense for the majority of the season, almost game in and game out. We're going to have a whistle this time against the Titans. This is going to go on Caitlin Kimmett. So Kimmett picks up her first. Ottawa Glandor's first. A minute off the clock, Ottawa Glandor with the one made free throw. Both teams still looking for their first basket. French bas has the basketball up beyond the perimeter. Going to move it around. Wiltsy down into the corner. Teeman looking for an outlet. Going to drive, gets cut off. We talked about the size of Ottawa Glandorf. That includes that long wingspan by those players. Lanes close very quickly. Lindemann has to pass it out. Wiltsy takes it with the right hand. Extra pass. Rostifer, three point try is up. That one's going to be short. We're going to have a loose ball foul. As that one is going to end up going on Lindemann. Liv Lindemann will pick up her first team second. Take a look at tonight's officials. We're going to have Tracy Lindsay, Zach Yelke, and Damon Coverman. Substitution coming into the game. Kaitlin Grothaus checks in for the Titans as Chloe Glenn and Caitlin Kimmon are going to take a seat. As we see number 24, Micah Aldrich come in as well. Ottawa Glandorf is going to go to their bench quite a lot. They have quite a bit of depth. Delphus Jefferson also made a substitution. Ryland Marquis, three-point specialist, into the game for the Lady Wildcats. 
Rebound down to Lindemann. They're going to want to push the tempo. Great job by Wilty not to put that one on the floor, just a little bit off on the shot. Yeah, and we'll see if Delphus can capitalize, trying to get out, especially with those four guards they'd like to play with, see if they can get out early. You know, great pass by Liv, just unable to finish. Carson Erford comes down on the other end. She makes the first basket of the game. Ottawa Glandorf on top, 3-0. Lindemann bringing it up for the Lady Cats, working against Hazelman. Nice job using the screen to get a little bit of space. Marquis puts it on the floor. You see the Wildcats want to go inside. Great adjustment by Lindemann. As I was saying, they want to go inside, but when it's not there, they have the shooters that can shoot. And Lindemann puts in the three-pointer there to tie it up. Yeah, we saw in that last possession, you know, OG's known for that tough defense, but Liv Lindemann was able to find just a little bit of space off of that screen, knock down a big three to tie up this game. Rylan Marquist is going to pick up the foul on the other end. That is already going to be the third team foul for the Lady Cats. They have more substitutions coming in. We see Chloe Glenn back into the game along with Kimmett. French, strong rebound on the inside. She really is going to have her hands full all afternoon long on the inside. Wilts' three-pointer no good. Gathered back in. A nice job that time by Kirsten Moore, who had checked into the game. Saving that one from going out of bounds. Able to get that out of bounds off of an Ottawa Glendorf player. Yeah, and as you said, Warren French is going to have to rebound for this Jefferson team. As you said, undersized a little bit, so this team has to rebound together. Three-point try on its way. No good. Hazelman comes up with the rebound. She pushes it up the floor quickly. Aldridge drives into the lane, kicks it back out. Kimmett down low to Glenn. Chloe Glenn, head fake. Nice help defense came over by Wiltz. He forces her to pass that one out. And then we're going to see Kimmett hit the floor, and a foul is going to be called. As this one is going to go on number five, Hannah Wiltz. Jefferson Faithful not liking that call. They just thought maybe Kimmett had gotten tied up with her own feet. But when you have that contact down low and you see a player um, lose her footing like that. More often than not, that whistle's going to follow. Erford's three-point try is good. Carson Erford, five points here in the quarter. Set right very well by Ottawa Glendorf. Found her in the corner, and a great screen by her teammate. Knocked down the big three. 6-3, Ottawa Glendorf on top. Glenn tries to cut underneath on that pass. And she has some contact from Rostefer. Foul going back the other way. That is already the fifth foul for the Lady Cats with just over four minutes left to go in the opening quarter. They are going to have to be careful. Or they're going to start sending Ottawa Glendorf to the free throw line here early. Jessa Rostefer was charged with that foul. And as we've seen early here, especially with officials, they want to make sure they control the game early. You know, kind of get everybody in the flow of, you know, the contact and hand checks, those type of things. You know, try to try to dictate how the game goes. Rotation continues to come in swiftly for the Titans. Chloe Glenn out. Kalen Grothaus out. There's Hazelman and Kaufman coming back into the game. Lindemann trying to direct traffic, letting the offense get set up here. As Jefferson doesn't feel like they've had a stronghold in this game, but um, only just the one shot down, one possession right now. As Lindemann tries to drive around through the lane, has to kick it back out. Wilson looking for somewhere to go with it. It's the Wildcats right now just living beyond the perimeter. Lindemann adjust this time can't get it to go down. Rebound down to the Titans. Yeah, with that pressure from Ottawa Glendorf, forcing everything out wide, not giving them any open shots. That shot is a no good. Caitlin Kimmett not able to connect. As we see Gwen Teeman coming back into the game for Jefferson. And I think you can tell already just here in the first quarter the size and the length of Ottawa Glendorf and the issues that it's going to cause. But there it is right there, the shortest player on the floor for the Titans, able to get her hands on that one to get a turnover. Now Hazelman looking to try to go inside. Kaufman working hard, trying to create some space. They got to keep it back out around the perimeter. 
Smith is working really hard, especially when there's an opportunity to throw it in the post, really trying to double, de double down, not allow them to have any easy passes into the post. That time, Erfer's going to get called for the double dribble. She's going to, she'll stay in. There's a couple other substitutions coming in. You see Kimmett check out of the game. Also, Maddie Leber Liber, excuse me, she checks out of the game as well for the Titans. Still 6-3, one possession game, 2.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. And I saying, started to say on the last offensive possession for Jefferson, I just think that you're seeing the length of Ottawa Glandorf cause some issues as that three-point try is off the mark, fighting for the rebound. Jefferson wants to come inside. There's just nothing there, so they're having to settle for these three-point tries that right now just aren't falling. Chloe Glenn, tough turnaround, no good. Lauren French goes up high, rips that one away. Both teams really struggling at the basket here. What a play by Chloe Glenn, but the official comes from behind, going to whistle the foul, as it looked like Glenn had done a nice job to get her hands on that basketball. As we take a look at the Beckman Jewelers instant replay. But either way, Anna Wilty will make a trip to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, we had an official down here on the baseline, didn't make the call, but the official from behind saw maybe a little bit of a, a slap at the end of it. Now we have a chance for number five, Hannah Wiltsey, to step to the line. Wiltsey not able to connect in her first shot. Second free throw was up. She makes the adjustment, and it is good. 6-4 game, 2.05 left to go. As Erford brings it up, gets all the way to the basket and in. Great take by Carson Erford as she has led the offense for the Titans here in the first quarter. That is now seven for her. Yeah, we've seen Carson come out with a little bit more aggressiveness, especially as she's continued to you know, attack on the right. She's had a couple of open shots, and they're a good drive with her left hand to finish. Three-point try by Marquis is off the mark. Hazelman trying to get down low, looking for cough, and that one's going to get tipped out of bounds. Basketball's going to stay with OG. Caitlin Kimmett coming back into the game. She'll take it out of bounds. Now they're going to rotate. It's going to be Hazelman triggering the inbound. They tried to get their four bigs underneath, and they throw this one away. Lindemann splits the defense, gets to the right hand, creates some contact, and gets it to go down. And that is something that is going to be key as this game moves forward, is how fast does Delphus Jefferson get back in transition defense? Zada Glendorf does not wait. They don't let you try to celebrate in a basket. There's no high fives or anything to let you get settled in. They jump out, grab it, and go. They hope to catch you sleeping. And if you're not sound in getting back and getting back into position, you see easy layups always get scored. As Hazelman gets into the lane uncontested, gets that one to go up. Take there by Hazelman as she was able to see the space clear out on the left side. And took a couple dribbles and jump stop and hit down the six footer. Under a minute left to go. Ottawa Glendorf on top, 10 to six. Delphus Jefferson trying to have an answer here before the quarter ends. We'll see if Delphus Jefferson chooses to pull it out and try to wait for that last shot. So it looks like right now, Liv Lindemann not in any hurry. Marquis steps to her left. Shot's going to be off the side of the rim. Rebound comes up to Hazelman. 30 seconds to play. Here's Grothaus. Back up top. Three-pointer is on its way. It's going to be off the mark as Caitlin Kimmett just pushed that one left. So with 16.8 seconds left to go here in the first, Delphus Jefferson will have an opportunity to come away with some points and maybe carry some momentum into the second. For Delphus, if they can get a score here, cut into this lead, go into the second quarter with a small deficit. Liv Lindemann with seven seconds left to go. Going to look to do something, tries to work off the screen. Step back three is up. That one's going to be off the front of the rim, and that'll bring the first quarter to a close. After one, Ottawa Glendorf on top, 10-6. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA.
Globe Wars presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. I'd like to also thank tonight's free throw sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Second quarter just about underway here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. Fast pace, up and down action. Both offenses got off to a little bit of a slow start. Ottawa Glendor found some success early, but Jefferson really started to seem like maybe they were clicking. So you start seeing that tempo push. They seem to be getting a little bit faster, and they're going to start with the basketball. Yeah, just, you know, we'll try to get out early if they can get the ball. Liv does a great job of finding teammates. A great possession here out of the first quarter. And that was just a great give and go between Wiltsy and French. Wiltsy gives it to French, takes off towards the baseline. French touch passes it back. And Wiltsy does a great job of finishing. Two-point game. Chloe Glenn with the basketball. Nice swing pass. Good spin move up. And that one's going to be no good. French in good position to get the rebound. She pushes it up to Lindemann. Lindemann, she's going to go. Gets it taken away from behind. And you mentioned that defense of Lily Hazelman, and you saw why she is such a tenacious defender and why she is so respected for what she does on the defensive side of things. Because right there, she just never quit. Trailed that play all the way and came away with the poke. Yeah, and very much you know, with Liv Lindemann and Lily Hazelman, both very quick players. Liv Lindemann trying to get out early, seeing if she can get some early buckets and spark this offense for Delphus. Jefferson trying to lob it into French, but had it taken away. That shot's going to be no good. Aldridge just a little bit off on that shot. So Jefferson here with another opportunity to tie this one up. Yeah, a little surprised we're not seeing Delphus Jefferson try to do a little bit more on that inside, maybe try to run some screens, try to get Lauren French close to the basket. But right now, they're content with running things around the perimeter. Now they get it inside her. She kicks it back out. Liv takes a step back, shoots. That one's going to be a little bit off. And French will get called for that foul. She went up and over the top. That'll be her first. And the team's sixth foul for the Lady Cats. Try to go inside to Lauren French. And as we saw, Hazelman dive down on her. Allowed Liv Lindemann to be open for that shot, just wasn't able to knock it down. Carson Erford back into the game for the Titans, brings the basketball up into the front court. Works through the screen, tries to split some defense, has to pass out of trouble, just hands it right off to Kaufman, who went completely unguarded down the lane and finishes for two. Good pass there by Erford as she saw her teammate cutting right beside her. Don't see that very often. A nice little handoff, but was able to do it and got an easy two. Jefferson right now just relying on that high screen to try to give Lindemann some space, but she has not been able to connect on all but one of her three-point tries. So this stays at a 12-8 game. Lindemann almost comes up with the steal, knocks it out of bounds, and will stay with the Titans. Saw that post entry was wide open. She dove down, helped out her teammate Lauren French, and knocked it out of bounds. Hazelman on the out of bounds once again. Tries the bounce pass to squeeze it into Aldrich. This one's going to be picked up by the Wildcats. We're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Titans. So now they're going to switch up the inbounds as Hazelman now will go down to the corner. Micah Aldrich will take it out. Last two times Lily had triggered that inbounds. And it, one was a turnover and one was a jump ball. Great find on the inside. Erford finishes and she continues to be the leading scorer and lead this offense. She now has nine. She's going to pick up the foul as Liv Lindemann. She loves to get going downhill, loves to try to get to the basket. And Hazelman, trying to hold her ground that time, picks up the foul. Rostifer on the inbounds to Liv. Liv able to gather it, almost lost it in the corner. Tries to create some space, goes through two different defenders and gets it up and in. A strong 
take there by Liv Lindemann. Looked like she might have been going out of bounds here in the corner, but tacks that baseline and finishes between three OG players. Off on that shot, Marquis tries to track down the loose ball, trying to dribble out of trouble. And had that one taken away, and it's going to settle with the Titans. And no, it's not. It's going to end up on the floor. Wiltsy gets the basketball, tries to push it up ahead. Another Lady Wildcat hits the ground. And after all that, Erford ends up with it. She's going to try to drive with the left, goes through traffic. That one's no good. Offensive rebound for the Titans. Kaufman goes up. She can't get it to go down, but there's going to be a foul. After that mayhem, Kaufman finally is able to collect the ball from pass from her teammate. Takes it strong and draws some contact here. An opportunity to extend this OG lead. Katie Kaufman steps to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. But first, we're going to have a timeout as Delphus Jefferson wants to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replays are made possible by Beckman's Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. Ottawa Glandorf on top, 14 to 10, as KD Kaufman gets ready to step to the free throw line for two shots. That foul also put Delphus Jefferson into the bonus, so Ottawa Glandorf is going to be shooting from here on out to end this half. Kaufman's first free throw is up. That one's no good. Katie Kaufman's coming to the season here, shooting 52% from the free throw line. So we'll see if that holds true, if she can knock down the second one. Second free throw up. This one is good. Kaufman splits the pair to extend the lead to five. 4.30 left to go here in this first half in the district final at Elida Fieldhouse. Lindemann going to drive back into the lane, has to get rid of it. Marquis throws up the shot, no good. Fight for the rebound, ends up into the hands of the Titans. Erford not going to settle, let the offense get set up. Down into the corner, Brinkman gets it back up top. Feed down low to Kaufman, Kaufman through the traffic, gets it up and in. And that's where we see that OG size really hurting this Jefferson team as they get it into the post. They're really doubling, but just that length can go over the top. Yeah, this feels like a big possession for the Lady Cats. They need to come away with some points. Wiltsy going to put it on the floor, gets through the lane, throws it up. Was looking for some contact, but didn't get the call. Good defense on this end. We see Kirsten Moore did a nice job of forcing Kaufman to pick that basketball up. So Ottawa Glanner will take the time out. We're going to step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. So Ottawa Glandorf takes the quick timeout as they wanted to make sure that they kept that possession as Kaufman was in a little bit of trouble as Kirsten Moore had, was all over her and not going to let a clean pass go. Yeah, she did a great job of realizing when your post player gets the rebound and doesn't have anybody to pass it out to and forced OG to burn one of their timeouts. Here's Erford, nine points on the night. Has been tremendous here in the first half. Drops it down into the corner. She's going to get it back. Extra pass. Three-point shot on its way. That one's no good. But Chloe Glenn comes from the other side of the court to chase down that offensive rebound. Hazelman left all alone. Thought of better of taking that three-point try. Passes it back out. Another one from the corner. This time it's good. As Kaylin Grothaus was not going to be denied twice. And Kaylin found herself open once again in that corner. Second time was able to bury it. It's now a 10-point deficit, the largest of the game. Jefferson looking to get something going here offensively. Teeman down in the corner, going to drive, has to kick it back out. Wiltsy, she's going to take it through, gets it off the glass. That one's no good. Well, we see once again kind of that length as these Jefferson players are driving. Just that length is forcing tough shots. 
Chloe Glenn gets her first two points of the night in dramatic fashion as she took some contact from Lauren French, hit the ground, but got the ball up and in first. Now it's going to be Delphus Jefferson's turn. They want to take a timeout and talk about it. They don't like seeing this lead get any bigger. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replays are made possible by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. Also, like to thank tonight's free throw sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Chloe Glenn is going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line, looking to convert the and one opportunity. Glenn's shot is up, and it is good. OG is content here to just allow Hazelman to kind of light pressure live. Lindemann, as Lind takes another shot, just not able to knock it down. So you saw Liv try to get a little bit more aggressive and get after it. Lauren French, too. And I think and that's another three-pointer falls. Lily Hazelman fired up after that shot. Five points on the night for Lily Hazelman. Only comes in averaging 3.3 points a game, but when you get points from her, they're big. As Lauren French finally was able to get one down low, but a little bit too hard on the shot as that entry pass seemed just a little bit off to pull her off her mark. And, but I think this is what we're going to have to see from Jefferson as they try to get back into this game here towards the end of the second and moving into that second half. They're going to have... As that shot is up and in right now, Ottawa Glendor is clicking on all cylinders on offense, but Jefferson's got to be a little bit more aggressive. We've got to see him flying around a little bit more and just attack the basket. If nothing else, trying to maybe get themselves to the free throw line. Yeah, settling a lot for those outside shots as we've seen the last two possessions here. Go into Lauren French, see if we can force OG to help down on her. A yeah, great take by Liv Lindemann there. French gets it back. Wilty lets a three-pointer go, and that's a big shot. It's been a while since Delphus Jefferson had seen the basketball go down, and that three-point shot stops the bleeding. 28-13, 45 seconds left to go here in the half. Aldridge down into the corner. Pass back up to Glenn. Chloe Glenn can shoot, can't give it too much space. Lauren decides to come out, make sure she face guards her, so they have to get rid of it. Now Hazelman's going to pull it back out. Yeah, Ottawa Glendorf knowing with this 15-point lead, don't want to give Jefferson another opportunity on the offensive side of the ball as Chloe Glenn just holds it at her side and waits for one of her guards to come and run. A set here, the last 10 seconds. As Chloe Glenn got Lauren Franks way well away from the basket. That middle had been vacated, and Chloe took advantage. Lindemann, long three-pointer is going to come up short, and that is going to bring the first half to a close. The second quarter was all tight as they are going to take the big 30-13 lead into the locker room. We'll step aside and be back with the second half here on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor. A division of all seamless spouting. Welcome back to the Alida Fieldhouse for tonight's district final. I'm Nate Garland alongside Josiah Stober. And Josiah, we were taking a look at those stats, and there's a couple of things that really jump out as to why this one kind of got out of hand. Yeah, as we look at the team stats, you know, we were talking during break, that three point line for Delphus Jefferson, two for 15. You know, we kind of live and die by that three point line. OG, three for seven from that three-point line. Um, but we look at just your, the field goal percentage, especially in that second quarter. Jefferson shot 25%, OG 61% in that second quarter, and that's the difference here. So we'll see what adjustments the Lady Cats made at halftime. As Wilty gets the basketball quickly, has to move to her left, shot goes up. That one's going to be short as right now, Jefferson just looks like they're rushing. I think they, you know, those closeouts, they know that OG's aggressive. They're going to try to get out to them, especially with that length. And it seems like they're short-arming a lot of their shots right now. 
Here's Glenn working against Rostifer, kicks it back over to Hazelman. She's going to drive. Almost had that poke, poked away uh, was Kimmett, but Isla Glander able to keep that one. Good find, Erford going to the basket, and that one's good. And Carson Erford's just like she started off the game. Two big points there for OG, a great cut. Was able to dive to the basket and make the easy layup. So team in, get rid of that one. Here's Wiltsy down into the corner to Rostifer. Rostifer took her eyes off the basketball there for a second, but able to get it back in. She tries to drive. Finally back into the hands of Lindemann. Lindemann going to work against the screen, going to spin into the lane, gets this one up, bounces around a couple times and in. And this is what the Lady Cats are going to need here in this second half. They've got to find ways to score and to get this clock stopped. And trying to get those eight and ones and maybe try to force some fouls on this OG team will get that defense to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, they have to be more aggressive, have to look to drive. Uh, we know Ottawa Glendorf is long, uh, but they have to be more aggressive. Can't just settle for those three-pointers. They're not falling tonight. Got to find something different to do. So Liv Lindemann converts the and one opportunity, 32-16. She has 10 on the night. Erford going to drive, pulls up. Lindemann gets a piece of that one. Lynn pushes it up ahead. Here's Wilsey. But Hazelman just takes that one away. Ottawa Glendor coming back down the other end. Erford gets it down low to Chloe. Chloe pulls up for two and connects. Well, he's been so big tonight for this OG team, not backing down from Lauren French. We saw at the end of the first half, got French outside the three-point line, took her to the rim, scored those last four points for OG, and starts off this second quarter with that mid-range shot. Lindemann, she's going to pull up for three. That one looks good, and it is. So Liv Lindemann coming out firing, trying to keep things close. We're going to have a whistle on the floor. It's going to be a foul. This one is going to go on Gwen Team in. It is her first team's first of the half. Micah Aldrich coming into the game, as is number 22, Kaylin Grothaus. See Ryland Marquis into the game, as is Kirsten Moore. So Jefferson has got the scoring that they've needed here to open up this half, but they haven't gotten the defensive stops. Let's see if they can do it here, and they do. Lindemann just takes that one away. She's going to go all the way in, goes through the contact of Hazelman, and she's going to get another one and opportunity as Liv Lindemann is trying to take over. Well, Liv Lindemann, two defensive stops there in the last two possessions. Got a block on one end, then was able to get that steal and finish on the other end. But that's what Jefferson needs to do. Get stops, look to be aggressive, tack the rim. You know, two quick fouls here in this second half on Lily Hazelman. OG will now have to adjust their defensive pressure on Liv Lindemann. So Liv Lindemann not able to convert on this trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Rebound comes down over to Glandor. They're going to move quickly. Crossing through the lane, off the glass. Great box by Marquis. Going to go out of bounds and going to go back to the Lady Cats. As Carly Brinkman had done a nice job of finding some space. But now you're starting to see the Lady Cats as a whole. You're starting to see that team defense. Everybody has that momentum starts to see coming back. They're getting back into this one. Well, and that's what they have to do. And you know, especially now for this OG team with Lily Hazelman out of the game with a couple fouls here. See if they can find some opening for Liv Lindemann. See if she can continue to be aggressive and find some buckets for this Wildcats team. So more waiting for someone to pop open. Finally, Wiltsy's able to come out and get it. Back up top, here's Teeman. She's gonna kick it out. Moore gets it into the hands of Lindemann. Lindemann going to reverse course. Gets it up off the glass and can't get it in. Another great move by Liv Lindemann to get to the inside, but couldn't finish. But a fortunate play on the other end for the Lady Cats as Ottawa Glandor throws that one out of bounds, and they're going to get the basketball back. Well, it's exactly what we just talked about, you know, just at the start here of this second half is Jefferson has to find ways to attack that rim. And so far here, you know, Liv Lindemann has knocked down a three, but almost every other possession has been attacking the rim, finding ways to get to that glass, and they've had some success. So 
Wilty step back, thought about the shot, decides to pass it along as Jefferson reverses the basketball. Marquis up top, gets it back over to Wilty into the corner. She's going to drive baseline, working against Aldridge, spins into the lane. Tried to find Teeman up top. Chloe Glenn takes it away, takes it in for two. 36-21. And Chloe Glenn's done that a couple times tonight. Has read those passes, got the steal there. Moore had that one sent back. Finds Wiltsy on the other end. Short on that one. Lindemann comes flying in to take it. She's going to shoot the three. A little bit long on that one. And finally the rebound comes down to the Titans. You know, I think we've seen that a couple times too from the Wildcats talking about that last turnover. They got they got into the paint instead of going up strong. They get a little concerned because you know that defense is converging. They've passed it back out and it's led to some pretty easy turnovers. This one is up and in. Kaylin Grothouse comes away with two more. Kaylin Grothouse now has five on the night. Well, and to go back to your point is I think sometimes mentally you know they're long and you just expect them to be there and then, you know, you take a worse shot because, you know, it's in your head already and we've seen that a couple times tonight from Jefferson. Long pass up ahead to Mark Wish. She's going to pull up for the mid-range jumper and that one's no good. OJ wants to talk about it. They're going to take the timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 38-21, Ottawa Glandorf on top. But we're starting to see some life come to this Lady Cats offense. They just got to find a way to get some stops here defensively. Yeah, and they've been more aggressive here in this third quarter. You know, but every time we see a little run by this Wildcats team, this OG team answers in a great steal by Liv Lindemann. As she finishes at the other end. So that's what they need. And Liv Lindemann comes out of the timeout, gets the quick steal. Coach Ann is not going to be happy about that one. They called the timeout to get things set up, and they came right out and gave the basketball away. Erford throws it out of trouble. As French does a great job coming around, Kaufman to take that one away. And then Lindemann gets tripped up, no whistle. Kaufman gets it down around the basket, going to be a fight for the loose ball. Brinkman gets it up. That one's no good. French can't hold on to that one, and now we're going to have a whistle. So a lot of contact on that one, and eventually the whistle does blow. The basketball's going to go to the Delphi Jefferson Wildcats. And one of those possessions where it almost looks like everybody was expecting to run and might have missed that body contact there, but... That's one of those ones, too. If you're an official and you're starting to move up the floor, you know, it just was feet got tripped up. They got the, they clipped the back of Liv's heel. She lost her footing. If you didn't see it, you look down and stay on the floor, you can't blow the whistle because you're not 100% sure what happened and you can't assume. Yeah, it's a tough one for the officials. And, of course, you know the fans are going to be yelling and screaming. But once again, though, Liv doing a good job, you know, being more aggressive, attacking this rim. You know, OG only had three fouls in that first half. So far now, already four here in this third quarter. And that's exactly what I was going to say, is the foul situation is almost reversed, as you've seen, especially Liv Lindemann, get a lot more aggressive trying to get to the basket. She's going to step back, puts the three-pointer up. That was no good. French comes up with it, and she's going to get called for the travel. No, they're going to say jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Titans. So I, I know the Jefferson fans are not happy with that one, but honestly it was either a jump ball or a travel because I didn't see a whole lot of, we're a little far away, I didn't see a whole lot of contact on that one. And if nothing else, at least they got the possession arrow flipped. Uh, this play happened on the opposite side of us and it looked like Lauren might have traveled, but officials called it a jump ball. And another good stop by Delphus here, an opportunity to cut into this 15-point lead. Aldridge not able to finish. Marquis on the other end is going to leave that one short. So Jefferson has gotten some stops that they needed. They just haven't been able to convert. Erford throws that one up. French with another rebound. 
Lindemann throws it up ahead. Here's Wiltsy. Wiltsy's going to look for the drive. Kicks it back out. Rossford, extra pass. Lindemann, she's going to let it go. That one's good. Liv Lindemann with another three-pointer. She now has eight points here in the quarter. Well, and that was just a better player overall. She had her feet set. She wasn't stepping back, shooting a shot. Her teammate found her in stride, and she was able to knock down that big three to cut it to 12. Let's take a look at the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Andre Glandorf, 38, Jefferson, 26. And that is going to extend now 41-26 with 40 seconds left to go here in the third. And Carson Erford has been the offense for this OG Titans team. Her and Chloe Glenn both coming in, hitting some big shots right when the momentum is starting to swing towards this Wildcats team. They knock down another big shot. They're going to look to drive, kicks it down into the corner. Wiltsy out to French. French gets it over to Ross where they're trying to get it back into the hands of Lindemann. They finally do. We're going to have a tie up and I believe we're going to have a foul first. I just saw Brinkman trying to reach in there and tie Lindemann up. And she got the arm, the foul call. So that's going to be the fifth foul that Ottawa Glendorf picks up. And that could be a big benefit for Delphus as we move out of this third and into the fourth. Jefferson's going to need to extend this game, and they can do that by getting to the free throw line. Well, they have to continue to be aggressive, drawing fouls on this OG team. Like you said, you know, to try to get back into this game, you know, they got to be able to score points. If they can score without time coming off the clock, that's big. Liv Lindemann not able to convert before the final buzzer. So we are going to head to the fourth quarter with Anna Glendorf on top, 41-26. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Instant replays are made possible by Beckman Jewelers in Ottawa. Let us help you discover the perfect gift of love, affection, or appreciation. I'd also like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of all seamless spouting. 41-26, beginning of the fourth quarter here at the Atlanta Fieldhouse in this district final. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And that third quarter, Jefferson really did pick up the intensity. They got into that attack mode that you talked about, trying to get at the rim. They did get some fouls on Ottawa Glendor, so things are starting to go their way. But they've got to find, they got to score at a little bit higher clip than what they are right now. Yeah, you know, able to win that quarter, you know, by three points. But like I said, got to be aggressive, continue to force OG to defend. Just can't settle for those outside shots. See if they can attack that rim. And Chloe Glenn, once again, she's done that a couple times, just getting her hand in the passing lane. Uh, but for this Wildcat team, she's just got to continue to be aggressive. Yeah, Chloe Glenn did not bite that time as Wiltsy went for the drive. She was hoping Chloe would crash on her, and she didn't. Chloe did a nice job staying home, knocking that one out of bounds. Lindemann with the crossover, left hand off the glass, that one good. Great take by Liv Lindemann there, knowing that Hazelwin has that three fouls, doesn't want to pick up that fourth. Has to be continue to be aggressive, see if they can draw that fourth foul or force OG into a tough spot. Chloe Glenn left all alone on the inside. She converts as Chloe Glenn now has 13 on the night. Delphus Jefferson. They've got to find somebody to give them some more points. Liv Lindemann right now, 22 of their 28. The other six have all come from Hannah Wiltsey. They need other players here in this fourth to come up big. Moore, she's going to try to be that. Going to drive, gets cut off baseline, and has to pull it back out. Well, like you said, we've got, they've got to have more than just Liv Lindemann. Right now, OG can collapse their defense on her, knowing that nobody else is being aggressive, which another foul there, one more, puts them into the bonus. Foul's going to be on 22, Kaylin Grovehouse. She reached in to try to poke that one away. That's Kaylin's first. Team sixth. Has some more substitutions coming into the game. We see Caitlin Kimmett check into the game. Jessa Rossifer back into the game as well. Hannah Wiltsey back into the game. Lindemann works against Hazelman. Lilly forces her to the right. Good slip pass to French down low. Lauren can't convert. Fight for the rebound. Going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Adam Glendorf. 
We've seen that a couple times tonight. Lauren French just leave it a little bit short, expecting a little bit more pressure from this OG team. And but a great pass there by Liv Lindemann. Another possession for the Wildcats. Lindemann's going to get fouled. Hazelman looks like she's going to get whistled for this one. That is going to be the fourth foul for Lindemann. So Liv Lindemann's going to make another trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Looking to try to narrow this one down a little. And live one for two on the night from the free throw line. This is where the Wildcats need to get some points when no time's coming off the clock. Liv can't convert on the first. Erford feeds Glenn down low. Extra pass up top. Good ball movement by the Titans, and they're going to pull it back out. They know where the clock situation is. They're not going to be in any hurry to try to force anything. Brinkman back up top to Chloe, taking direction from Coach Yant, and he's, she's going to pull it back out. Erford's three-point shot on its way. No good. French comes up with the rebound. Lindemann. Goes downhill, gets it off to Marquis. Marquis does a nice job driving baseline and gets it up for two. Exactly what this Wildcats team needed is someone else to be able to attack the rim, get some points here, and now they have to get another stop. With OG in no hurry, just running their sets, Coach Ant yelling out some directions, making sure his players understand what they'll be running here. Almost another steal by the Wildcats. 13-point difference. Ottawa Glandorf just killing some time now. Jefferson's got to find a way to get some extra possessions. Drives baseline. Shot is up. Grothaus connects. Seven for Kaylin Grothaus on the night. She's done that a couple times tonight. Hit some big shots. I keep saying it here, but just when you feel that momentum starting to turn, OG just knocks down a big shot. Keep the Wildcats at bay. Lindemann not able to connect on that three-point try. 420 left to go in the game. Brinkman gets it back up top. That's now Ottawa Glandorf. Uh, a stall but not stall mode. Move the ball around the perimeter. Don't try to force anything. Yeah, it's a miscommunication that time. Looked like Erford thought that that pass was coming to try to get out of the way, but it was actually intended for her. So out of bounds it goes, and it'll go back to the Lady Wildcats. Yeah, bad turnover there by the Titans. Not a whole lot of pressure from the Wildcats as they decide to take out Lauren French, put another guard in to apply some more pressure to this Titans team. But they got to get some buckets. Right, they got to get a bucket. Here's Rossifer. She's going to go put us on the floor. Has that one rejected. Erford. Marquis just trying to get in the way. Did not want to let Erford get all the way to the basket. And I believe they're going to say this was a continuation. And no, they're going to say foul was on the floor prior to the shot. So we will have another timeout on the floor. Jefferson takes a full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Out of Landorf takes the inbounds from underneath their own basket, gets it out to Erford. Jefferson wanted to take that full timeout. We'll see what Coach Lindemann asked his defense to do. I'd imagine at some point here we're going to start seeing fouls trying to get this clock stopped. Jefferson still has quite a few fouls to give, so you have opportunities to try to jump those inbounds, give yourself some possessions, and if nothing else, try to extend this game, maybe get some luck. You know, need quite a few missed free throws from Ottawa Glandor, but there's still time left to work. Yeah, that was only the third foul of the half for this Wildcats team, so they can be as aggressive as need to as they get another steal here. They do a nice job of trapping down into the corner. Liv comes up with the steal, she moves it up ahead to Wiltsy. Wiltsy, long pass over to Teeman. Teeman down into the corner. Marquis thought about the shot, puts it on the floor, gets cut off. 
Needs somewhere to go with it. Needs some help. Finally gets it to Lindemann. Lindemann pulls up for the jumper. Can't connect. A good shot there by Lindemann. Just wasn't able to connect on the six-foot shot. Shot was able to find a little space in the lane, but wasn't able to go down. As we see Jefferson here now trying to double some of the passes, make it difficult on this Titans team. Now you can tell Ottawa Glendorf does want to kill clock as Erford had a wide open lane, thought against it, pulled it back, almost gave it up. Here comes the double team, somehow get out, got out of it, finds Kaufman down low, and we're going to have a foul. So Katie Kaufman's going to make a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. She'll be shooting two. Katie Kaufman. And we will have another timeout. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cause for TV44 to broadcast it to you. Say thanks to viewer supporter TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and clicking the donate button. 530, you know, Josiah, time might be running out here on the Wildcats and on this tremendous season that they have had. But, you know, it's hard to fault them. You know, year in and year out out of Glendor, we know what they bring to the table. They've had a ton of success. But this team right now is the healthiest that it has been in quite some time. And with the rotation and the number of players that they can throw out there at you with real no drop off, this team is going to be an incredibly tough out for anybody. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, you know, to go through this district, you got to go through OG. Um, and, you know, with that rotation, so many players throughout the year get a lot of playing time that a lot of teams don't have the opportunity to give their players so they can bring those players in. And as you said, there's not really any drop off no matter who they bring off the bench. You know, that's when they were going through, you know, you call them struggles, but not really struggles for for their programs. Some other ones, not so much. That, but it was because they were having injuries, they were having to work through some things. Some girls who didn't, they weren't um, necessarily relying on for heavy minutes were, was having to put those in. And all that did was make them better. That bench got a lot more strengthened. They've gone to a lot deeper bench than what you typically would see um, in postseason play for most teams. But when you see tonight, they can move two, three in at a time, and the offense just continues to go. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where it's paid off right now is got some girls in foul trouble. Just bring in somebody else, you know, that can play and has played a lot of minutes and nothing drops off in your style of play. Kaufman gets out of trouble along the baseline, finds Erford wide open underneath. Left hand doesn't go. Second opportunity. That one's no good. I think even Erford can't believe that even <laughs> one of those went down. I think everybody just thought that was going in the bucket and we'll go back the other side. We'll see off on her shot. Another whistle. I believe team is going to get called for this foul. <laughs> Jessa Rosterford coming into the game. Caitlin Kimmett coming into the game. A minute 33 left to go. Ottawa Glandorf on the verge of another district title. Marquis able to get her hands on that one as it goes out of bounds. This Lady Cat team not going away quietly. They are fighting hard all the way to the end. Hazelman has it up top. Just going to work a little bit of a weave, but Wiltsy decides she wants to break that up. Can't finish, and that's just kind of, you know, the, the, the small little sample of what we've seen out of this Lady Cat team. They've had opportunities, but just for whatever reason tonight, things have just been a little bit short. Yeah, like you said, you know, we've seen you know probably three or four layups like that tonight, or just short, or throw you know long, and just haven't been able to capitalize. And you know, that might be in a different game right now if those go in. Final minute of this one, Lindemann. 24 points on the night, trying to add to it. She's going to end, or she's going to end with playing a fantastic game. She's had a tremendous career for this Lady Cats team. Okay. 
couple more people. substitutions coming in quickly. Twenty-eight point nine seconds left to go. Delphus Jefferson inbounds the basketball. Lindemann has it. Milty leaves this one short. And that is just going to about wrap it up as Ottawa Glandorf is just going to dribble this one out with 15 seconds left to go. The Giant looking forward now as they move out of this district, head off into regional play. You know, what, what is it going to take to knock off this team? I mean, you know, you look at it and there's not a whole lot of glaring weaknesses or places for other teams to try to attack. Yeah, and I, like you said, you know, they don't have a lot of weaknesses, but you almost have to have a, a game where you got to have three scorers um, able to attack this OG team. You know, we talked about the game by, tonight by Liv Lindemann, 26 points on the night, you know, but they only scored 34 points. You know, so you almost have to have a team of, you know, three, four players, you know, that can give you double-digit points um, a night. And But like you said, not, not many weaknesses we see on this OG team. We look at their bench, you know, playing 8, 9, 10, 11 players coming off, and, and nothing changes when those players come in. So, you know, congratulations to once again uh, another district title for this OG team. Um, but, yeah, and a great season for these for the Wildcats. Yeah, take nothing away, away from the Lady Cats. A tremendous season. Only the second loss on the year for them uh, here tonight. And being knocked out of the tournament, it never feels good. It always hurts. But when you lose to the quality of competition like Ottawa Glendorf Titans, at least you know that you, know, you went out fighting and you went out playing the best. An absolutely tremendous season, though, for Delphus Jefferson. Congratulations to them and to all those young ladies. They had a great year. NWC champions, a sectional title, you know, a lot of great things. They watched Liv Lindemann get her thousandth career point this year. Just a lot of great things happening in that program. Coach Denise Lindemann has done a fantastic job with those girls. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Elina Fieldhouse as the award presentation is underway. As Delphus Jefferson coming to get their uh, district runner-up medals and trophy and then they will be awarding and cutting down some nets for the titans as they knocked off the delta jefferson wildcats at 48 34. we'd like to thank our entire crew everybody working the cameras going back to the studio doing all the edits for us we appreciate everything that you guys do for us one final time as we watch the trophies be handed out og takes home another district title for josiah stover i've been nate garlock have a great night everybody